Hello, welcome to this um, first battle report of five from Alicante 2024, in which um, my Mithraditic army, chosen for obscure reasons, and there'll be a podcast about that, I'm sure, um, takes on all comers after the team from central London has done, well, you know, this is it, this is a bit of tourism, this is basically why you go abroad. You go to historical monuments, you go to their gift shop, and you see the opportunity for all sorts of great baggage to use in future in a future competition but um enough of that let's let's have a quick look at my army which um, as i say there will be a podcast that goes into this in more detail the theory behind this was well the theme of the competition was unpopular armies in spain or in the spanish meta quite possibly and um the mithraditic army was one of them now i've been kind of tempted to use uh, i've been through a phase of using some um, arab armies and then some sort of slightly bonkers armies but just sort of going back to a, a slightly subpar but still it's kind of got most of the toys um kind of pseudo successor army just really appealed um in in this particular period and also i think it was a period where you could have heavy chariots it was a period where you could have cataphracts um not quite up to knights but there was quite a lot of dangerous things so having a, a successor type army with some spearmen and some pikes was kind of interesting the fact that Mithraditic is generally seen as being less than the sum of its parts was also quite an interesting challenge. Um, as you can see from this list as well, it has the opportunity of, of nearly having every single unit in each command being completely different as well, which amuses me as well. Um, it got two side chariots on table, got a couple of um, cataphracts of my own, and um, got the Galatians out as well. So it, was a, it really, looking at it, you've got two big broad commands that can do two things really both of them can do two things they can they can crunch enemy infantry with the pikemen with the galatians with the imitation legions but also they can deal with enemy cavalry with that mix of sort of cataphract pikemen heavy spearmen and it's really do you push the the galatians and the legions forward um, to go into the enemy infantry and use their impact and sometimes their furious charge or do you push the pikemen and the cataphracts and the other bits and pieces forward to deal with enemy mounted troops? Um, and there's even in that second command a bowman snuck in there as well. Um, you've got a couple of Thracians which can occupy terrain, but, but there's not a lot of terrain in this. And then the third command, a heavy cavalryman, elite, included general, Scythian and a light horse. That command is really just to occupy the rest of the table, if there is any, that the, um, the two solid line kind of crunching advance forward commands will, will hopefully be filling and dealing with so you know it's it's not perfect but um if you've got this it's it's not a bad army to choose because it's got its um, brittleness as well um which makes it makes you need some quite big cojones in some ways to to take it but what do we fight in the first game well the draw was known about a week ahead and um this was a, a northern and southern dynasties Chinese was it? Uh, well, no, sorry, Three Kingdoms Chinese. So just after the Han period, um, pretty tasty. It, it's where they give up chariots and go into impact cavalry. So what was the terrain? There was a big hill that the defender had placed here. A bit more terrain over here. Um, this was an ambush marker. I was pretty sure there was going to be four infantry here, um, spearmen or something like that, to, to sweep down the hill. That really, with this being rough terrain, made this a bit of a no-go area for me. So, so I decided to block it off with the small cavalry command, the javelin men, the bowmen, and the elite cavalry there. And then here, the two commands. So you've got the impact foot um, over here. You've got the glaciers here, sandwiched between the pikemen. Um, you've got the two cataphracts expecting something to come off that hill. Um, I keep the chariots in reserve. It's an interesting, interesting thing. Um, you know, there's an argument if they're being purely forced to be historical, you'd stick them out the front and race them forwards. But it's an interesting one. In AGLG terms, that would mean enemy light troops would come and just shoot them and blow them up and they'd be gone because they're very, very, very brittle in AGLG. Now, using them behind the lines in some ways is, um, until an opportunity arises, is obviously in some ways iron historical. But what it does do, it makes the enemy very, very, very scared of them, far more scared of them than they should be. And so in some ways, it creates the right psychological effect um, to allow you to do that. If you force them out the front, you'd have to probably engineer loads of other rules about 
getting Lightfoot not to fight them and all sorts of things. So this is sort of a, it achieves the right event, uh, right end, and, and as you'll see, they never actually do too much. Big bit of rough terrain here, um, might even be a plantation looking at it, possibly something in there. Small cavalry command here, and these are all a mix of impact cavalry and bow cavalry. So it doesn't look too, too dangerous what's there, but clearly there's a lot of stuff here and it's gonna threaten my flank as I come forward. So so what, what happens then? Um, it looks like I'm going first. So yeah, this lot drifts slightly to this side. These are all medium swordsmen. Um, what are they? That's a spearman, there's a bowman here. It hasn't had a chance to flip out. My light horse um, on this side with another cavalryman. So really with the, the Thracians, with the bowmen, with the spearmen in particular, you can get out there. We've kind of immediately shut the door on, on this gap between the terrain and the edge. So these guys are not gonna be able to force their way down here past spearmen, bit of cavalry and archer as well. And I'm thinking, you know, my, my pikemen can go this side. These guys will go into the terrain, anything that's hiding there that jumps out. These are not really what they wanna be fighting in the open. They can go in there and mix it with them. It's kind of interesting. And it turns out there's actually a cavalryman in there, which is a bit, um, bit mad, um, hiding behind a, a light infantryman. So let's have a look at this army now. We're starting to see all of it. And this is with the, the ambushes out there. So as I said, you've got this small command um, there's a very similar structure, impact elite and impact, and a medium cavalry bow, a light foot bow, two light horse. So what you will see happens in the game here is you've got troops who can evade and shoot and troops who stand um, and fight. That makes it very, very difficult for infantry to, to charge them because if you charge the impact cavalry, the impact cavalry get their impact and can, can destroy you. If you don't charge them, you've got bowmen sat there pinging away at you, which you've got in two commands here. And this is the um, the bigger one with the strategist. And here you've got whole arm support, spear support. They're gonna jump out from behind that hill quite soon. A bit of bowmen, and again, similar sort of thing, slightly more punchy impact cavalry. Um, and an unusual impetuous elite, but I guess maybe this is a, a groovy Spanish thing, just having the one of them as a as a line breaker. And if you've got a strategist and, and they're in ambush and hiding them, you can pretty much keep control of them because there's not a lot else in that command that, that's going to soak up all his pips. So, so what happens here? We're kind of getting to the stage which we should be able to see behind that hill, but I'm just pressing forwards into this gap using these two cataphracts really probably to screen off anything nasty that jumps out from there and try and get as far down the table as I can to deny these guys the room to, to get out of the way. And there are some sort of squishy crossbowmen and archers in there. They're going to be a bit of an anchor to stop these cavalry doing anything too clever. As you can see, this pikeman can drift and, and join up here. Now I see there's nothing too dangerous or when I'm confident nothing's out there. So, so this is really create a press across here, try and stop the maneuvering, and let's have a look what's behind there because it's not quite come out yet, even though um, clearly I know it by the time I've written up the army list after the event. So here they go. Yeah, first bit, first bit breaks from over here. This is the impetuous guys. They're running behind the marker. The cavalry have moved up to form a line. So we've got a bit of a face off here against my cataphracts, um, but this guy can still come through. And this is still a wall of spearmen. These are still quite vulnerable. So, you know, they're having to redeploy and do something. They've still not triggered the, um, the ambushes yet. Um, over here, <coughs> I think I kind of described earlier, this overly clever cavalry ambush has been chased out of the plantation by the Thracians in very short order. The other two are kind of lurking, wondering what they can do, but Thracian spearmen, bowmen, bit of cavalry over here as well. It, it, this door really is shut. They're, they're probably going to have to retreat. I now know there's nothing else in here. The Thracians have thrashed them out. So these heavy infantry are just going to go straight through that um, uneven ground, which they can do. They're, they're still much better than a single unit of light infantry in there, even though they don't really like being in terrain. And as long as the pipe miss it, we can join up with the press here and hopefully just bring this whole group out here and, and see what happens with um, with these. So what's happened now is the cavalry have moved up really close. I, I push forward and there they are. There's the, the spearmen and pole armmen coming down the line. Now that they've joined up with this cavalry and they're onto the hill, it has sort of exposed um, my line here a bit. I think these guys have probably drifted across a bit closer to this bit of terrain. The, the pikemen haven't quite got the pips to get through and, and join them up yet. So I've probably got a cataphract here, spearmen cataphract. This is really sort of okay. Throw this out there to, to delay them, de delay them. And actually, there's a lot of points and a lot of troops here that, yes, they're they're in a position to get around my flank. But spearmen, 
elite cataphract. There's another cataphract here. They've got to fight this thing. They're going to take a while, and hopefully I'm, I'm going to be pushing into the squishy stuff um, before that happens at some point, um, if I can find a way to deal with this, this rather tricky impact and bow cavalry formation. So there they are. Some of these are pole arm. Some of them are spear. They're all supported, but I've, I've just got this normal cataphract here and the, um, the side chariot just to cause some distraction, and these are more impact cavalry. So, so what's going on here? The cataphract, sorry, the, the side chariot's gone in. Boom, done a, a good double hit straight away. Um, the spearmen with the overlap, they've kind of taken it on. The cataphract's pushing forwards. Don't think there was anything here. And we were in a bit of a, a bit of a kind of complicated pickle here. Um, he's got an injury, I've got an injury. We should be able to grind them down. Nobody can really press forward here. This, this is one of these weird situations in which the gap's a little bit too small. I don't really have the reserves. Um, this is the general from my, my skirmishing command. I've just left the two white horse to deal with it and he's come to shore this bit up. This is a bit of a, a hinge. If I can get into these guys, that'd be great. But, but he's having to use cavalry to stop me getting into the cataphracts. But that's a risk. If these guys can force their way through here, there's, there's huge damage to be done here. But the question is, how do we, how do we force back the impact cavalry or, or when do we dare to do it? So over the other side, this is the nice, tidy, solid line that's been assembled. Spear, bow, heavy cavalry, javelin cavalry. It's just their light cavalry, these two, these two impact cavalry. The medium cavalry has been forced away. You may even take some injuries. The Thracians are starting to push around. So they're holding the line, but, but you know this looks like not a lot's gonna happen here that's gonna affect the game either way. These are now too far from the line of scrimmage for much to happen. So over here, as I've said, the um, the heavy infantry, the Roman imitation Roman legionaries are pushing through. The pikemen are coming in as well. I've got a, well, a big old log jam here. This just isn't wide enough for all my stuff to get in. But it's being defended by light horse, which um, can't really stand against any of it. And I think I'm hoping that there'll be somebody charging away here and I'll be able to sort this mess out a bit later as I'm just trying to shove everything into the zone of danger. Um, over here, side chariot's had its day. Um, it's done. It's left a bit of a big hole. My spearmen are now on two hits. They're starting to struggle, but, but this thing is still intact. And this cataphract is sort of covering it. The cavalryman's sort of covering it here. You know, there's an awful lot of troops here. They are going to start to roll me up, but it's what's going to happen in the meantime in the rest of the table, really, before, you know, can I win here before, before this starts to go inevitably wrong? So here's a kind of top-down view. Just take a quick drink now. And you can see some of the cavalry have been forced off by a, by a charge. <coughs> some of the cavalry have stood. And this is the thing where the impact cavalry stands. I try and chase away the, um, the medium cavalry with bow. They do evade. I clip these guys on a corner because we're all line up and slide across. And I think this block of that was two impetuous Galatians. This one has gone forwards. Clip this guy who stood. I've not just chased those away. It's drawn him into it. That's forced these pipemen into a charge. But I've swung the cataphract round into this one. I've jammed the heavy cavalry into it. You know, clearly there's a risk of someone hitting the cataphract in the flank. But but if I can create a mess here and and start to put pressure on here and just push through, it's a it's a kind of gummy old mess. But you know, it's it's several moves before it actually collapses. And elite cataphracts are still pretty good, and there's still opportunities to do good stuff here. And and getting overlaps on those pipemen into impact to all. This guy gives me a plus. This is my impact into that. But these guys even it up again. I'm elite. Pikemen are, are there for reserves. There's not a lot of reserves here. So <coughs> it's kind of a battle of attrition here, but not, not much stuff left to, to force through. So over on this side, having to put the second string cataphracts up to try and hold these guys back. The light horse with javelin are coming in as well. <coughs> And here you can see this sort of situation developing. It's still still fighting away. Nobody's quite sure. He may well be zoning this one. My pikemen have come off the worst um, against that, trying to charge charge these impact cavalry down. These guys have come off the worst, but I'm pushing past it, and they suddenly look a little bit isolated. Nobody's dead going to these yet. The spearmen are in a lot of trouble. That's a red hit marker. So this thing is, is looking pretty flaky um, at the moment. And, and it's not really working out as well as it should do, I think. Um, I've not really managed to get all this other slew of troops into the game. It's a, 
it's a bit of a traffic jam piling into a, a very small number of cavalry who are happy to be charged by a traffic jam really um and here we go a bit of a miracle the um the spin win the spin that managed to turn the tide helped by the cataphracts they steam forward destroys that as well suddenly boom 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 and amazingly let's go back and look how it was so these guys must have recorded a great victory that's done the extra hit onto them that's allowed those to blow through and there's just a Suddenly a massive problem where this guy is okay pinned by him. They are going to hit him in the flank, but he's got a lot of other troops looking ready to go. And suddenly these guys don't look so clever either. Because it looks like I've forced away, you know, again with three hits on the table. But <coughs> <laughs> the pipe and the spearmen um, have forced this away. Sorry, this is the, the tail end of a cold that I even had in Alicante. So slightly zoom back. The impetuous troops go in taking on the pipe and the cavalry come back to it and I'm still trying to sort out this log jam there's a lot of stuff taking a lot of injuries here some of the glaciers are dead the extra second string pipe is still trying to get in they're still trying to push through I've just got a bit becalmed over here with the traffic jam too much to do and and hits are really really starting to add up and this is some of the the Chinese cavalry coming around and starting to to pin me as well the bowmen are coming back into it so it's just a bit of a mess really i've just failed to keep a coherent line in any way shape or form and and it is being picked a little bit apart by these um these sort of pseudo stepish chinese um lance arm cavalry so over on the other side this is where i make a terrible terrible mistake the game is running towards the end of it and my my light horse here have just about managed to stop this column of infantry coming but but what i've done here um my cavalryman threatened by this one was you know too tired um too slightly hung over too much of a cold coming on we've decided to turn and charge that away rather than rather than be hitting the flank or have him come around the back and hit all these guys and i've completely failed to notice that by charging him away i send him exactly straight to my camp um, and it's the camp which is going to tip the game so if i'd not done that there's there's a possibility of a draw but sadly i give to win um to my opponent i've done a pretty decent amount of casualties onto them but but not really and i think it's all about just getting that log jam not getting the full width of the army engaged allowing the enemy to concentrate on one flank of it not quite sure what i could have done about that hill um you know i had to go past it i had to push it if i'm going to be aggressive otherwise i'm just sitting up and, and waiting for nothing to happen and nearly managed to push past it but but i think lack of practice um, lack of sleep managed to create quite a bit of a log jam and I just didn't get all my proper troops aligned together and I think with an army which has got so many different small bits like the um, like the Mithridatic you do need to make sure that they do all work together it is less than the sum of its parts and um, and if you don't coordinate the parts it's a lot less than the sum of its parts so so that's how the first game ends in a defeat for the Mithridatics. Hello and welcome to the latest Madaxman.com Army List ADLG podcast in which I'm joined by Rick.